say you are what you eat, so I don't eat chicken feet. But I love me some of Grandma's pickled beets. Well, cut it up, put it in the pan, throw it over your shoulder and see where it lands right here in the farmer's kitchen. Maters, taters, beans and corn, the cows in the barn and the sheep's been shorn, kids in the barnyard chasing Grandpa's chicken. Chicken, chicken. Spices, slices, cuts and dices, gonna slash your grocery prices right here in farmer's kitchen. Help you grow your garden good with recipes to suit your mood. Try some grub you've never tried before. Smash it with a wooden mallet, gonna educate your palate right here in farmer's kitchen. In town, farmer's country kitchen. cook something good now. Funding for Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen brought to you by Woods Equipment Company has every tool you need to make working the land as rewarding as hunting. L81 Bottling Company. Taste, love, and share the tradition. Rose Farm Supply, family farming and commitment to our customers since 1982. House Warmings, meeting all of your outdoor living and fireplace needs. Welcome to Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. It's 400 degrees out. That's why we're not cooking in the house. We're back on the patio. It's beautiful out. Got a little breeze blowing, a little warm. But you know what? It's the time of year when a lot of stuff's coming in. Vegetables in the garden. Nikki in a little while is gonna make us a wonderful casserole out of squash and other assorted items. Now, we had a visitor just recently Janine Wishy, you remember the sheep lady we talked to not too long ago? Well, guess what? She not only does sheep, she does chickens. She brought us one of her Swallow Rail Farm chickens that we're gonna cook tonight for you. We haven't had chicken in a while. We do a lot of red meat, so it's time for some chicken. But anyway, she came over, we walked around the property because I'm getting close. Now, we've talked about it for years. We love our lamb. We're finally gonna do it. We've got the solar electric fence from King Cove. It's movable. We talked to her in great detail what you have to do to get sheep started. Got to get a little puppy to grow up with the sheep and protect them. Got a lot of stuff going on. But meanwhile, salad. Everybody wants a light salad in the summertime. I got to reading the ingredients, but listen to this. Phosphoric acid, xanthan gum, uh, modified food starch, monosodium glutamate, artificial flavors, disodium phosphate, sorbic acid, and calcium disodium EDTA disodium you, you see what I'm saying it goes on and on and on I started thinking I don't know what that stuff is but I'll tell you what I do know I know that I'm growing fresh herbs on my back porch fresh spices why not use them I want to make a creamy Italian dressing you can't beat it I went out on the back porch and I picked me some basil and parsley oregano and some rosemary a couple tablespoons of each I'm gonna pop that in my little food processor, along with a rather large clove of garlic. And I'm gonna put, oh, anywhere between a third and a fourth cup of mayonnaise. Sour cream, two tablespoons of sour cream. Tonight, later on, we're gonna have some pork sliders, you talk about delicious, on the salt rock. I'm telling you what, it's absolutely delicious. We're gonna take two tablespoons of red wine vinegar, then I come back, gonna come back with two tablespoons of olive oil. All right. Oh my! Just like that. What did that take me? Two minutes. I'm gonna put that in the refrigerator and we're gonna put that on a salad layer that's absolutely wonderful. All right, now I have prepared my egg. Now let me tell you what, you can use anything. Some people prefer pecan, apple. I'm a hickory fan, that's just me. You use whatever you want. 
I absolutely love hickory. You can get these big chunks. That's what I like. I'm going to take this chicken and I'm going to lay them down. Now I put the plate setter in and I put the grill down. I'm going to flavor this backside. This is Dizzy Pig and it's called Mediterranean. It's got a whole lot of thyme in it and some lemon zest flavors. It smells like heaven. That's really all you have to do to this chicken. That's it. I'm going to roll it over. and just season it liberally with this Mediterranean-ish from Dizzy Pig. That already smells like heaven. I'm gonna cover that about like that. Get that on about 350. And again, that setter there acts as a drip shield and that keeps anything from flaring up when your grease comes out. And that's how we're gonna get that started. Now, I'm gonna bring Nikki in and she's gonna start this wonderful dish. We got a lot of squash, most of you do this time of year and she's always looking for new ways to fix it. She made this thing a while back. It was absolutely wonderful. I was talking to Byron Crawford on the phone the other day. Him and his wife made something similar to this, and he said it was so good, it made him want to smack his best friend. <laughs> so let's try that. Let me throw this away. Sergio the Stinky Farm Dog lives outside with his friend now he liked to come in and visit but mama won't let him come in cause he likes to roll in voodoo and roll killers dear to him sergio the stinky farm dog we love him but he can't come Sergio the stinky farm dog lives outside with his friends. Now he'd like to come in and visit, but mama won't let him come in. Cause he likes to roll in food and roll kill his dear to him. Sergio the stinky farm dog. We love him, but he can't come in. I said we love him, but he can't come in. You know we love him, but he can't come in. Because he smells like homemade sin. Tonight, we're pairing our chicken and our a vegetable dish that you're fixing with a Christmas milk vidal blanc which is very good. It's Kentucky grapes, and we're gonna chill it right now, put it around here in the fridge. Okay, so Nikki has, uh, Nikki has come in and swarmed the compound, and <laughs> is ready to cut up some vegetables. Look at these pretty, pretty vegetables. Now, we've got yellow squash, we've got zucchini. Uh, Janine brought this and that onion. She brought that onion. And the garlic. All of this. Fresh, wonderful stuff. Got corn from Gallon Farms from last year that we put up. That's one of our last bags. Yes, it is. I didn't realize we had any left. Lucky. Uh, our corn is a little bit behind. This is nice and sweet. Some kind of critter pulled up all our corn. We had to replant. Mm. Not nice. All right, I'm going to get your butter going because that's where we start every good dish. Now, you remember back in the days, oh, you got to eat margarine. You can't eat butter. Well, they found out that butter's better. I'm going to eat what I like. I'm going to, within reason. I think we stay fairly healthy. We, we yeah. walk and do all that kind of stuff. So. If I want a little butter, I'm gonna eat it. That's the only bad thing in this recipe. Everything else this, is that's not bad. Butter's good. Butter's good for you? Okay. So you're cutting up your yellow squash? I'm cutting up my yellow squash. This is actually from Janine. That's pretty Thank squash. You, I can't wait to, to get our sheep. That's uh, that's gonna be you know I remember as a kid, anytime that we'd go out in the country and people had sheep, we were doing that quick. Is that bad? No, it's just amazing. I like the class. What class? <laughs> I think you skipped class. Okay. But as a kid, anytime we went to somebody's farm and they, they had sheep, it was just so relaxing. They're, they're a lot of fun, but I, I'm looking forward to the sheep thing because we do like our lamb. Have you noticed, by the way, uh, we're doing a, a lamb burger next week with tzatziki sauce. It's absolutely wonderful. So if you've had a gyro, how do you say gyro? Gyro. If you've had one of those and liked it, that's very similar to what we're making next week, along with a few more things. You want to throw that in? You, is that done? Is that ready? Yeah, that's ready to go. All right, so we got our onions, two different types of squash in. Mm -hmm. All right, so you're gonna let that boil. We're gonna boil it down. And if you want to, this is the seasoning I love, Lowry's. You love your Lowry's. Lowry's. 
Because sometimes when we eat this, we used to just eat it like this. Remember, just mm -hmm. zucchini, yellow squash, and onions. It's good like that, too. Now, this corn, this is really sweet. We're going to pour it in, too, and it's, kinda, it's got some juice. Got range. We got so it's going to make it juicy a little bit. Shelby County. And we're going to let and this And that cook. does kind of release a little milk-like substance. Right. And we're going to let that cook till it and cooks butter. down. Right, till it gets a little bit mushy. Okay. You know, a lot of people have been talking about similar dishes. We were talking to Kathy Hignite mm -hmm. uh, when we were down in Alabama, and she said she'd recently had a dish like this. We we're going to get her to do it, but we couldn't stand it. We had to make it like right now. She had it at a restaurant. So had it at a restaurant. Delicious. Byron Crawford and his wife have been making it. So now we just want to let this, let's let it cook down, get kind of mushy. Kind of mushy. Mushy, and then we're going to throw it in a casserole dish and add some stuff to it. Add some stuff to it. Some stuff, secret stuff. Now, let me tell you what. I always like, especially this time of year, if you're cooking outside, inside, whatever, I like something quick and easy. If you got some people coming over, if you got some family or friends coming over and need something quick and tasty and good, a lot of people are really particular. This particular dish right here, that I don't know anybody that doesn't like this. It involves pork loin, it involves salt rocks, it involves a bun. Sounds good. Let's talk about some pork sliders with our buddy John Tucker. I'm talking delicious. John Tucker back in the harvest cabin, cutting some bread. You know what, my dad, when we were kids, he loved to make his world famous cheeseburgers. And I always wondered why he was taking his bread and putting it on the, uh, he'd take put a little slab of butter on it, and he'd take his hamburger and just make it really thin and put some onions on it. And he'd make, I guess what today would be called a slider. So today you're making pork loin sliders. How easy is it? Piece of cake. Well, we've already sauteed up some mushroom and onion over there. And now we're cooking up our pork loin and a little bit of the avocado oil to toast up the bread, and that's it. You're done. Just that easy. It's that simple. Now, the great thing about pork we talked about earlier is the fact that it's, what, $1.99 a pound? Yeah. So if you're cooking for a bunch of people, which we do on occasion. Ground beef's not that cheap. These No. And you get a whole pork loin, slice it a half inch thick. They'll do it for you right at the grocery. Slice it up a half inch thick, throw it on there. You're talking maybe two minutes on each side and you're done. That's it. That's the recipe. Now you could, if you wanted, you could put mayonnaise or, or mustard or whatever. Sure. With, with this, I don't know why you'd, why you'd have to because the taste is already there. One See, thing's for sure, you don't need a lot of stuff to make it more juicy. It's there. All right. So basically you're talking about just a couple minutes on each side when, once you're up to temperature and you got yourself a, I can imagine having these at you know Super Bowl games or anywhere, anytime. They're super quick and super easy. The longest time is heating up the salt box, but just throw it on while you're prepping. Bring it up to 400 degrees, throw some oil on, and you're cooking. Now, another thing we talked about was, was the, the fact that these are mobile. You can put it in a small bag. You can pack it up with your butane burner. You can take it out, throw it over the fireplace, over the grates of a grill, your tailgate grill, uh, anywhere. Now, you know, we talked last time about the fact that they've changed the temperature on pork. We don't have to cook the fire ever now. That's right. So we can do 145 on pork. Mm -hmm. It makes me sound like a chef, but I just cooked a lot of pork, and I know we don't have to be well done anymore. We can do medium easily. Look, look at the color of that bun. It got browned on there. Let me see the top side of that. And super, super simple. Oh, yeah. Smack it on there. Right on there, and we're good to go. And look what you got. And be careful. It's a little hot. It's a little hot. I could eat those all day long. You have heard me say this on before, Tim. I don't cook. Pork sliders. Cheap, easy, and lovely. Thank you, dude. That's what I'm talking about. Pretty colors. Looks nice. I like it. Can we go ahead and dump it in for you? Please. It's hot. We yeah. forgot our hot pads. Beautiful. That in itself is, to me, edible. You could yeah, eat it like that, but we're going to be fancy. I have some breadcrumbs. You know what? You've, you've been making a lot of casseroles on the big green egg here lately. It makes and these little dishes are so wonderful for that. Parmesan cheese. Uh, dig where you're going. Oh my goodness, the cheese on top when that when that smoke rolls on that. Yeah. It has the most, it, it tastes like smoked cheese. Yeah, it does. I'm gonna just stir this a little bit because we're gonna top it with mozzarella. A little more cheese, so now with some mozzarella. And you can put mozzarella slices. So I know good food so, sells it and you can slice it. But we got shredded and that's it. We're gonna cook it. Just like that. Just like that. All right, I'm opening up the egg. I'm gonna burp it. Look at our chicken. A sneak peek Yummy. at the chicken. Perfect. Right. Chicken's coming Looks along. Good. But while we're waiting, when it's 
this hot outside. I like me a little summertime drink. Let's talk about some moonshine. And let's bring Deanne in and let's see if she'll make us a special drink. Deanna's back. I'm back. We're gonna make, here's, you know, I like the sound of this sugar shine. Sugar shine. Apple cinnamon pie. Sugar shine, apple cinnamon Real pie. Real live moonshine? Real live moonshine. Legal moonshine. Legal moonshine that you can buy, yes. And we're gonna make an L81 concoction. We are, we're going to make an L8 moon bomb. Moon with bomb. apple cinnamon pie sugar shine. Show us how that's done. I will do it. It's very easy. I'm gonna fill it with some ice. Now tell us about this, you say it's from a Beam fellow? It is, yes. Steve Beam um, is the, the master distiller for Limestone Distilleries and they're in Lebanon, in Marion County. They have created Moonshine. They have some other spirits that they're working on, but of course those take a little time to age right. before you can market them. But Moonshine has a pretty quick age on it, so this one in particular is Apple Cinnamon Pie, one of my very favorites. And we're going to take an ounce and a half which I'm just gonna eyeball. And then... And it smells like apple pie. It does, it smells just like apple pie. And it tastes like apple pie too. And of course, the ginger and the apple go well together. We're gonna top it off with L81. All right. And then we're going to squeeze a little lemon, express a little lemon and in that's it. That's what I'm talking about. And drop it in there. And then just as a final touch, we're gonna take a cinnamon stick just to give it a little freshness. And we are going to Great, just a little fresh cinnamon across the top. It smells like Grandma's Kitchen. It does. That does smell good. It does. Ooh, and ooh and all over it. Smells wonderful. I promise you, you can put that apple pie moonshine over ice and sip on it, and it's pretty good. It smells like Grandma's Kitchen, I'm telling you. Very good. You gonna come back and give us another one, Sharon? I would love to give you another one. Thank you very much. We'll check it. Yes. It smells, oh yeah. Perfect. Look at that, brown Perfect. on top. You getting it? Here, I'm gonna slide around here, cause that's gonna be hot. Be careful. I'm gonna set that right there. Look at the brown top on that. It's perfect. And smell. And it needs to sit, yeah. we won't be able to eat that yeah, for a little bit. Yeah, that's got for a while. Now the chicken's not quite done yet. We're gonna let the chicken go a little while longer. And how do you know when the chicken's done? You grab the leg. When the leg pulls away freely, that means it's time to eat the chicken. The chicken. Now this is going to be good. We got. Don't forget, we made our salad dressing a little bit earlier. Homemade salad dressing. We're going to bring you a dressing of the week, we might call it. Salad dressing of the day of the week. We haven't determined what we're going to call it yet. But there are so many good recipes. You can do it right in your own home. They're not complicated. Right. And you don't get all the maltodextrin cost in Boston. Exactly. And yours tastes good. It does taste good. We're going to let this cool down. When the chicken's done, we're going to come back make our salad. We got folks around here. Our family surrounds us constantly. They usually are throwing things at me by this point, but doesn't that smell good? It does smell good. Oh, I'll be back in a minute. To eat our food? To get our food when the chicken's done. Yum. Craig Cottle from Nature Reliance School. That is correct. Right here in Kentucky. That is correct. Now, the first time we talked, you had some uh, you had some tools on hand, and you showed us some things, you know, how to make a fire and what to do, you know, to to keep out of the weather, so on and so forth. The second time, you really touched on something that was very important, which is mindset. Right. If you have a will to survive, you're way ahead of the game from the gate from the cat who just says, "I'm done." Absolutely. Tell us today what 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 uh, the, the second. Well, the way we approach it is we like to talk about techniques and tactics. And what I mean by that is not necessarily specific techniques for survival, but how are you going to go about getting things done? So you've got to have your priorities in order. In essence, uh, if you're bleeding, you got to take care of that. Because if you go out hunting for food and you're bleeding, you'll bleed to death before you actually need food. And so we focus on it from that perspective of a personal safety and then shelter building, fire building, which go together to help maintain your core body temperature then we go looking for water, and then we go looking for food. And that, that doesn't mean that we're not opportunistic about it. If we happen to cross food or if we happen to cross water, we'll take it in. But at least if we don't have any of those things, we know what our focus should be. So when we move out and we're trying to take care of ourselves, that's what we're going to do. We're going to look at those priorities. So in essence, if you're out and you're wounded, that needs to be your top priority. Stop that bleeding. 
personal safety, uh, and, and, that, and that goes along with any type of trip outdoors is that if you're doing things that are silly, uh, bordering on stupid, <laughs> and it's easy for you to get hurt, then you shouldn't be doing those things because if you're in a remote location, like I like to go paddling, I'm in the middle of the Red River Gorge and I'm out doing something, I'm, I'm talking the middle of the actual gorge, yeah. where it's very remote, impossible almost to get to me in short order, and I'm acting stupid, then I might pay the price for that. So I don't, I just keep calm and, and don't go out with the, uh, the most problematic person out there, which is the idiot. Uh, the idiot is the one that's gonna get a lot of people in trouble. I, well, I better keep my mouth shut. I know a couple of us. Yeah, I do too, I know a bunch of them. <laughs> so, so basically choose your travel partners carefully. Uh, and again, if you find yourself in trouble, you should have the at least the basic knowledge of what you should be doing first. If somebody gets injured, we've got to take care of that person. If it's cold weather, we need to start immediately finding a way to develop shelter or build a fire or something of that nature. So instead of running around in circles, what should we do, what should we do, what should we do? Have a plan. Have a plan, work the plan, stay with the plan. Uh, if something is causing somebody to go further towards death, closer to death, then we got to adjust the plan, if at all possible. But it, the best thing to do is have a plan in mind before you get in trouble so that you know what to do if trouble visits you. Life can turn on a dime. You Absolutely. can fall, you can fall in water, in, in certain times hypothermia is a real issue. There's so many things to think about and that's why you're here and that's why you're going to talk to us on down the line. First of all it was mindset, second? Techniques and tactics. What's going to be number three? Gear. Let's talk about gear next time. Sounds good. Thank you very much. That has finally stopped bubbling. Looks you know good. what? Pour us a glass. Now, let's talk about Kentucky grapes, Kentucky wine. This is uh, from Crispin Mill. It's a Vidal Blanc, and it's yummy. It's perfect for chicken, fish, things like that. You know what? It's time. I'm going to pull this chicken. guy off. Thank you, Janine, who we will feature on next week's show for this yummy, scrumptious chicken. I've been and seen her chicken farm. They're happy chickens free-ranging chickens, and oh, Delish. the smells coming off here are wonderful. Now, do you remember earlier when we made our salad dressing? All fresh, all yummy. That's been chilling in the refrigerator. Looks we'll good. A little bit on our salad. It's even better when it's chilled. Is it better mm -hmm. on your hand? It's or, good. Or <laughs> <laughs> How do you like it? Very good. On a scale from one to 10, be serious. 12. That's good. Let me get a little bite of that. I was talking to a fellow. He was 100 years old. He's passed on right now, but I said, what has, what amazed you more than anything? And I've told you this before, but he said it wasn't going to the moon. He watched from the time of horse, horse and buggy to cars to people landing on the moon. He says the age of information. Get online. Look at stuff. Go to YouTube. Check out stuff on TimFarmersCountryKitchen.com you haven't seen before. What do you think? Good garlic taste, isn't it? Mm, fresh garlic. Mm -hmm, that's good. Real garlic. Ooh, yum. That might be my favorite. Check out our Facebook page and like it. Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. Nikki's slicing the chicken. You want me to dip up some of your? Yes. What do you even call this, by the way? Uh, I don't know. What do you think? Zucchini casserole corn surprise. I like that. Oh, the freshness of this dressing is just absolutely wonderful. Good. That fresh garlic. It's good, it, isn't it? I mean, that's just right out of her garden. And don't forget next week. We've been talking about getting sheep forever. Plus, we have a wonderful recipe. You're going to try some of your, we, we can't tell them exactly some what. Some Greek stuff. Some Greek some stuff. Greek food. That's absolutely wonderful. And we're getting ready to dig into this. We don't want you to see because it's going to get crazy. We fight over We're going to fight over it. Let's fight. And I'm I, far away. I want that piece. I was going to eat that piece. Again, don't forget to check out our Facebook page and like it. And remember, it's all about good times, good friends, and good eats. And Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. See you next week. To order a cookbook or DVD of the show, please call 502-319-0487 or email timfarmerck at gmail.com. Chrisman Mill Vineyards. Good Foods Co-op. Kinco Farm Fence Supplies, Kentucky Beer Cheese, Polecat Custom Smokers, Tater Knob Pottery and Farm, Weisenberger Mill, and Tim Farmer Productions.
Funding for Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen brought to you by... Kentucky Sheep and Goat Development Office. Try something different tonight. Salt Rocks, the flavor of life. Harvest Energy Solutions, Harvest Cabins, when you absolutely have to get away.